This drum set is insane. We have a full-blown drum purchasing emergency. It's not really an emergency. A buddy of mine sent me a picture of a kit at Sam Ash. I don't think anyone's gonna buy this kit, especially in the next 20 minutes, but uh, I figured we'd go check it out. Maybe buy it. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. Do I want to pay for it? Not really, at least what they're asking. But also there was another kit in the background of that photo that I might be interested in. And if not, I might know someone that might be interested in it. So I figured I might do him a favor and check it out for him. So uh, let's see. Essentially gave us this Gibraltar rack. The bass drum has a crack or had a crack, and it's down here in the bottom. The big ass crack, you just epoxy over it. Yeah. You could probably sand that down and re it. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised you guys have a Safane kit here. Yeah. loaded up and i am officially now a rack owner now that i think about it this is the most money i've ever spent on a drum set so hopefully you subscribe all right so before we get to the drums let's check out these racks and the rack is really the main reason i decided to buy this kit because if we think back to the impact kit that thing was like a nightmare to set up uh, that was mainly because of the shape of the drums and they can only really face one direction because of the scoop on them. But trying to set up this kit without a rack and without the proper mounts will just be a huge nightmare. So this rack should definitely come in handy. Uh, this is just a plain old Gibraltar curved rack. We have the two legs and then the crossbar, I guess you call it. You can mount cymbals or really anything off of here, but these are not the right tubes for this. They're a bit small. And you can even see that like every single piece of this rack has just been absolutely reefed on and is all dented up and bent and destroyed. And then there's a short curved piece that kind of just like floats on the side that I probably don't really need for this. And then of course the crossbar with four DW rack clamps and these little special tom mount things made for rack clamps. The clamps alone are like 40 bucks a piece, so 40, 80, 120, 160, and these things are like 30 bucks a piece, so 30, 60, 90, 120. That's like 300 bucks in hardware just right there. Plus, it came with the original North Rack, so let's set this up. I was not trying to make a repair video out of this. Those threads need some love and all the stuff I need to fix it is in the garage. But if you couldn't tell, this rack is a bit more uh, primitive, we'll say. Not really sure what's up with this one. This is the only one with a, uh, what, a coupler nut on it. Oh, you know what? The end of this is really chattered up, so probably broke in half. They shoved a coupler nut on and then screwed that onto the other end. And then all of those washers are probably so that it tightened up in the correct orientation. I always love playing drum detective, but I'm definitely not using this rack. Oh man, where do I even start? The bass drum definitely has the most wear and tear. You can see all these little scuffs and scratches and everything here. And then also there's this crack that looks like it's been repaired with JB Weld. And that goes through both sides. It seems pretty solid to be honest, just uh, a little messy looking. Another reason I decided to buy this kit was it had the spurs on it and these are like the Fibes style spurs. Should just push these in, twist and they come out. And then the same thing to go in, just push twist and they're locked in and then you can adjust with this little spur thing here and for anyone that's ever restored a fives or anyone that owns a fives you know that these spurs are like impossible to find and it looks like this one's just been kind of cobbled together i tried to pull it out earlier but i don't know oh, there it goes yeah this looks like a piece of like conduit or dom or something with a spring in it a roll pin and then uh 
piece of all thread that's been pointed. Is that a word? So for what this is, it's a nice little piece. Uh, for now though, I do have these, which are actual fibes uh, spurs, which are off of my fibes kits. I just leave them in here because you can't really collapse them and they just poke the wall and everything. So for now, I'll just steal this one and shove it in. Good as new. They got this custom uh, reverse EMAD situation, so I'm definitely gonna replace this head. I'm not too sure about the hoop, if this is original or not, but it's probably been painted at some point. Also, some of the spur, not the spurs, the claws have been replaced. I'm pretty sure these are the originals and those are just like generic ones. Also, one of the tension rods has been replaced, so what I'll most likely do is I'll take one of these and put it up here and then replace the bottom two with a regular tension rod so that the T handle isn't in the way of the floor and makes it a little bit easier. I'm also really curious about the size of the drum. This is a 22, but it's about 22 and a half inches long and the rezzo side diameter is about 24 and a half inches. Now for the mounted toms, these things are absolutely massive. All right, so this is a six, that's an eight, 10 12 and the floor tom is a 14 but the opening of the six is 10 inches the eight is about 13 the 10 is about 15 and the opening of the 12 is about 17 that is huge there are still a few scratches and dings here and there, but again, nothing as crazy as the bass drum. They're also a little bit more dusty than I thought. Same ash, gotta, gotta step up your game. Ain't nobody got time for dust. And then the floor tom, oh, this is probably like the coolest looking drum. It almost looks like a, like a weird cricket type thing, but it has the special leg because this is a rather odd shaped drum. So that was another factor in me deciding to buy this kit. I mean, you probably could take a regular leg and bend it up like that, but if it has it, that's one less thing I need to do. Once again, this is a 14 inch drum and the opening is probably like 20 inches. Nope, about 18. It's also pretty interesting that they had to like cut up these lugs to fit them in this curve. If we look at this section, that's like a straight lug while this one's nice and cut up. And I don't think the camera really picks up how big these drums actually are. Like I keep thinking, oh, that's an eight, that's a 10, that's a 12, that's a 13, that's a, a 16. But no, these drums are like tiny, but huge at the same time. Also, these are probably the biggest wing nuts I've ever seen on a drum set. For the bass drum, I'm putting on a Remo Power Stroke Pro since there's some built-in muffling and should help out since there's no front head. I also ended up switching out all of the tension rods and claws for the time being since the originals were a bit too short for the new claws. These heads aren't totally dead, but they've definitely seen some use, so I had a few new CS dots as well as some used ones laying around, so I figured I'd switch them out. I really wanted to shove five MD421s up inside of the toms, but I don't have five laying around. I also don't even have enough mic stands, but the rim clips on the DM20s just barely work well enough to put them on the rezzo side of the shell. I wouldn't trust them on a gig, but it should work well enough for now. 